Welcome to War Stories. War Stories is a hustle and grit podcast series sponsored by Treadstone Associates. Treadstone has worked with hundreds of businesses to help them dominate their industries. Our success led to the development of a simple four-stage special ops program called the War Room. The War Room's mission objective is simple. Build systems and processes with three goals reduce expenses, increase revenue, and ultimately transform the business owner from a manager to a CEO, from a soldier to a general. Each of the four battles in the war room focuses on a different aspect of your business, from accounting, operations, legal, and more. The foundation of each battle is the battle blueprint. The battle blueprint is a strategic plan prepared by a Treadstone general after evaluating your business's strengths and weaknesses. The battle blueprint includes specific, actionable steps to secure mission objectives. It is time to gather your troops and prepare for battle. For a limited time, you can receive Stage 1 Battle Blueprints for just $99. That is a $3,500 value. In addition, we are also waiving the fees for Stage 2, 3, and 4 Battle Blueprints. That is a $29,000 value for free. Click the link below to learn more and to schedule your free enlistment call today. Welcome to War Stories. My name is Umar. I am the COA here at Treadstone. War Stories is a series dedicated to the art of war in business. For centuries, business owners have used principles of war to guide business strategy. The goal of this series is to harness the principles of war to grow and defend your business. As part of the series, we're doing a sub-series on starting your own business. Whether you are a seasoned entrepreneur or just getting started, this series is meant to help you explore new opportunities. As part of this series, we are meeting with franchise companies across Canada, offering unique opportunities to start a franchise business. We learn about the business, how to obtain a franchise, including costs, and what is involved in the entire process. And today we are learning about Crunch Fitness. Crunch Fitness is a multinational gym franchise business with over 400 locations across six countries. Founded in 1989, Crunch Fitness is also a staple in the Canadian business community. Today's guest is Clinton. Clinton is responsible for franchise sales and development across Canada. Thank you for joining us, Clinton. Thank you for having me, Umar. I I, I hesitated because I didn't want to butcher your last name, so I was about to. Yeah, yeah. And then I thought, how, how, how do you pronounce it properly? Zapla. The C is silent. Zapla. Okay, C is silent. Yeah, I, I meant to ask beforehand, but it, it slipped my mind. How, how's your day going? My day is going great. The sun is out, you know, so what else can you ask for? Finally, after uh, for what felt to me a long, uh, long, long winter. That's um, right. You know, it's, it's happy to get out there in the spring. Ex- exciting episode today. I think um, I, I, we haven't uh, spoken to a gym franchise yet in the series, so I think this will be a, a unique discussion for viewers to learn about uh, what's involved in owning a gym franchise um, and and specifically at Crunch Fitness. Um, but before we get to that, let me just remove this, uh, before we get to that, um, I wanted to just, uh, uh, spend some time, uh, talking about what you do with, uh, crunch fitness, your career, um, how you kind of, how, how you, uh, um, how you uh, obtain the role, uh, responsible for franchise development across Canada. So that's, that's a big responsibility, um, a lot involved. Um, so what that entails and then how you got to that, uh, that position. So tell us a little bit about your journey. How did you get started uh, in your career and what led you to where you are? Yeah, certainly. Um, you know, so I, I'm a Hamilton native uh, here, here in Ontario, and I entered the workforce at uh, the age of 15. And I started as uh, at Tim Hortons in, in customer service, as a lot of people do, you know, during that time. Um, all through school, you know, um, you know, I worked various jobs from retail to quick service to door-to-door sales as well, and manufacturing, construction. So it, it really learned, I, I really learned, you know, time management, uh, multitasking, public speaking, uh, customer service as well, and team development, you know, during all those times. And um, 
throughout my years in uh, restaurant hospitality, you know, that really led me to health and wellness um, with gyms. Um, so I accepted a job in Quebec, actually, um, working for a brand out there as a general manager for a gym. And um, I, I didn't speak French, but uh, the team that I had, they spoke French as well. So I was able to translate very effortlessly with uh, the different clients and also different suppliers as well. So it didn't really have an issue with there. I worked very hard, um, you know, really learning the business itself, it's, uh, itself. I had a lot of transferable skills from my hospitality management and restaurant and many other different fields that I tried my, my hand in, but really didn't feel I was home until I found health and wellness. Right? Um, and so I worked up um, for about a year and a half, two years almost, uh, from, from a general manager to a regional manager. And I kept that position for about four or about four years. Then I moved back to the Hamilton area, Toronto area, and I got involved with Crunch Canada. Um, and uh, I accepted a role with franchise sales and business development, um, which I've always done in my other fields, but never directly as a role. It was always been a subcategory thing, right? And uh, so we do handle all franchise sales and business development for all of Canada, excluding Quebec. Quebec has their own factor for the properties out there. Okay, interesting. U unique experience in that. Uh, now, um, so I'm gathering your responsibilities are now kind of uh, bringing on new uh, franchise owners and then supporting existing franchise owners. That but uh, yep. but what, what I found uh, is unique um, and atypical about people in your position at other companies is that you have a practical experience running a gym. Right. So as a general manager, was it a very hands on role? Were you involved in a lot of the different areas or what kind of experience was that? Oh, it was extremely hands on. Um, you know, so you have to keep an eye on your uh, your your KPIs. Um, so you want to look at your new member units, your cancels, uh, focus on your personal training sales as well and always uh, work on your team development. Um, I have my weekly meetings with my department heads, and I also have my pre-shift meetings with my general uh, MSR staff as well. The speed of the leader is the speed of the team. You, know, uh, you really right. set the tone for yeah. those environments. Yeah, no, so you're really, you're playing the leadership role uh, effectively, yeah. and that's part of, I think, a big aspect of, of the Treadstone Associates program too. It's, it's a lot of business owners don't understand the distinction between managing and leading. Right. And, and what you, I think you pra very practically right now and concisely defined a lot of things that you need to be doing when you're leading as opposed to just managing. Right. So you're you're bringing you're helping people move forward towards that that unified goal. Um, so tell us a little more about uh, Crunch Fitness. Um, I, I gave a brief overview. I know you mentioned uh, uh, I'd, I'd seen 400 locations, six countries founded in 1989. What else can you tell us about uh, Crunch Fitness? Yeah, Crunch Fitness, you know, it's a great model and a great brand. Uh, it really represents the most progressive, um, competitive fitness model in the industry. Um, our clubs are quick uh, to build, easy to open, and highly scalable. Um, you know, so today, Crunch, like you said, it does serve over 2 million members. Um, we started franchising Crunch in 2010. Um, here in Canada, we brought it in 2017. We got into business with Crunch Canada. And since then, we've uh, opened uh, 32 locations across Canada. So it really does show the popularity of the brand and also the value of the brand, not just to the consumer, but also as a franchise owner. You said across Canada. So you're in your coast to coast. You guys are uh, operating or opening franchises? Yes, we are. Um, so we have properties as far as Alberta, um, all the way out to Quebec, London, Windsor, uh, Winnipeg. And uh, so all of Canada is pretty much uh, open territory. If you want to open a crunch in Yukon, you call us. We'll take care of you. <laughs> I wonder if there, I mean, possibly, I wonder if there are uh, gym franchises up north, that far up north. Um, okay, so let's 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 talk a little bit about, let's get to the nitty gritty. Um, let's get to the process of opening a franchise. Um, I know um, a lot of people that I've spoken to uh, that have thought about opening a franchise or um, uh, thought about opening a franchise in a different business than they had already been running. 
um, there there is always this confusion about um, what is the first step. I think that's the that's the one thing that is, is overwhelming. Do I who do I call and what will they tell me and what will I do? And there is that intimidation there. So I wanted to really get to like get to the the the, the very basic basic level. So um, what is involved? Let's say um, someone decides I want to. I'm considering a Crunch Fitness franchise. Um, is there an application? What is involved in the application? And then what do you guys look for when you're reviewing them too? Yep. Um, so that's exactly the, you know, the beginning of the process, you know, so how you become a crunch franchisee is first you need to visit our website, crunchfranchise.ca. Fill up uh, the online submission form. Okay. Uh, shortly after that, one of our or myself, uh, representative will be contacting uh, the individual. Um, so once they submit that form, They'll also fill out a financial application that vets their finances to ensure that there's a conversation to be had further down the road. Okay, um, and then we'll actually send you know the FDD, which is our franchise disclosure document. Um, and you, as the prospective franchisee, you'll do your you'll continue to do your due diligence um, and looking at all the different facts and figures within our FDD there. Then we'll invite you over to the club. Um, so we'll invite you to our head office over in Cambridge. We'll do the tour there, meet the executive team and all the department heads that will be working for you and with you. We'll also do a tour at some of our flagship locations so you can see some of the great finishes and some of the actually get into the environment so you can actually walk the club as a business owner. I like what you're doing here. I see what you're doing there. This is a great space over there. So you can really get your eye for detail there. Um, Okay. So, so, uh, just in terms of the application, mm -hmm. is there, um, so if we look at the, um, not the financial aspect first, the, the, the rest of the application, the, the characteristics, I guess, or the resume of the individual, um, how much of a role does that play when you're selecting a, a candidate? Uh, are you looking at a resume? Or are you just looking at, um, you're looking for skills? Um, what are you looking for? I guess is a better question. Exactly. It, we're looking for all of it. Okay, so our, our ideal franchisee is a person who wants to work for themselves, but not by themselves. Okay, um, and we don't just look at, you know, the financial part of it um, to see if they can actually afford the actual business. We look at all the experience behind it as well. Um, just like myself, I have transferable skills in a variety of different fields. Um, so we're looking for true professionals that have, you know, 100% commitment, 100% uh, drive and passion in whatever field they came from. And then, of course, you know, during this uh, selection process, um, we're selecting you as a business owner just as much as you're selecting a business to invest in. Um, so these are a lot of the traits that we're looking for. You know? So a lot of like-minded in that sense. So drive, passion. I think I think a lot of it boils down to also what's, what you need when you're running a business. Um, you need that perseverance that you're not gonna going to start tomorrow and 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 make a million dollars. You're not going to month one be rich, right? So you need to understand that it's going to take you time. I think for any business, take you time to to build, uh, lay down brick by brick that foundation, um, and then slowly over time build that revenue, and then eventually it becomes what you thought, what most people think it is on day one, right? So so I, I like that you're pointing out to those characteristics. Um, I, I say this a lot uh, in in the podcast too. I, I think I think one of the, to me at least, one of the fundamental things uh, to, uh, when you're an entrepreneur uh, to focus on, um, it's very traditional, but it's, it's looking at, um, um, I'm not Catholic myself, but the cardinal virtues, right? So if you look at the cardinal virtues, so if you look at uh, uh, per, um, fortitude, if you look at courage, if you look at um, uh, prudence, so you have to understand how to uh, how these things have applied in other aspects of your life, and then multiply them by a hundred, and then you'll see what what you need for a business, right? So it's it's you need to be able to fail, get up, keep going, fail, get up, keep going, have that courage that that I failed before, but I'm going to fight the fight, right? So so I, I like to emphasize that. Um, but so you're looking at those character traits, who has that perseverance, right? Who has that, who has uh, the, the, the client service skills um, or is more well-rounded in their ability to run a business. Now, when it comes to the financial aspects, um, what does that look like? Are, are you looking for 
someone who has a lot of cash up front? Um, what are the different variables or characteristics you're looking for in an individual when you're assessing their finances if they're if they can open a Crunch Fitness franchise? Yep. Uh, so that's all included within that uh, that initial financial application. You know, so we're going to review the application to determine that the financial qualifications um, are met. All right. Um, so the initial franchise fee, when you're looking in for the actual uh, trademark and copyright itself, is thirty five thousand. Okay. But where you're going to be spending your money is your real estate, your build out, construction, and also your uh, equipment. Okay. Um, so what the bank is requiring any and all partners, whether it be a sole venture or combined venture, okay, is a net worth of approximately two million, okay, and with a healthy liquid capital of about four to five hundred thousand, okay. Um, now, what your um, fee is going to be, your your royalty in perpetuity, is only five percent on your monthly gross sales which is the best value you're going to find in the health and wellness space. All of our competitors, quote unquote, loosely, um, are over 5%, if not 7.5 and above. This is all public knowledge on any one of their uh, franchise websites. So when you're looking for the best value in the low cost space, there's no better brand than Crunch. Okay, so so just to break that down, so net worth two million dollars. So I'm guessing for most people that would come from their house, um, or yeah. maybe some a few other investments, uh, and then within that is included your capital, right? Uh, that you need to access, or is that in addition to your? That would be your, in addition. Yeah. Okay. Okay. In addition, so your net worth of two million dollars, cash four to five hundred thousand, and then I'm assuming. Um, uh, so you mentioned. Um, the build out costs, uh, real estate, build out equipment. That's a, that's a major investment in the beginning. Um, so what is, it, is it a, a difficult process to obtain a loan for, for this? I, I know you mentioned that the bank, these are the attributes banks look for, but mm -hmm. are there, are, are candidates being matched to lenders? Are you guys saying, okay, this is what you need and now go find a bank that's willing to give you a loan. Um, how involved are you guys in that process and how much support do you give, I guess, is the best yeah, exactly. So we'll uh, we'll take a look at um, your finances. Um, we'll provide financing assistance. We'll help review anything and recommend our lenders through our network as well. Um, now, with that as well, um, yeah, we we work with everybody uh, on their finances. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So you're 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 kind of coaching people through. The reason I say this is 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 I find that we get. Uh, people from different stages of the the entrepreneurship journey, or even the, the an understanding of how do you get financing when starting a business. So it's always good to know that if, even if I don't know that stage, I have some kind of support uh, that's that I'm being provided um, in terms of matching me or helping me show where to go, um, and then also of course assessing the numbers. Um, so I guess moving on. So now let's say someone has obtained a loan. Um, they have the net worth. Um, you you think that they have the skills that they need, um, and now they've they're they're looking at a real estate property, right? So mm -hmm. tell me, just quickly touch upon um, how that is selected and how much of a role uh, the individual plays. Can they come to you and say, "Hey, I have there's this unit over on this plaza. I want to I want to open a location there," or do you give options? Yeah, so what we ask our uh, our prospect, our franchisee, is three areas of interest you would like to develop, okay? Um, and then we'll get our real estate site selection team out on the uh, on the job for you to find the best uh, sites for you. We'll get all the census for you, whether uh, for the average median household income, the different competition in the area, all the appro uh, the appropriate um, information. We'll analyze that data. And then we'll present it to the franchisee. At the end of the day, the franchisee has the final say on where they want to put their business. But of course, you know, we want to uh, ensure the best success possible. So we use Buxton as a report um, and it gives us all the information that we need um, to show the best information for to, uh, to the individual. Um, and so we help them all the way from site selection and all the way from negotiating the rent all the way to the deal. Um, and okay. Yeah, so we take it all the way from beginning all the way to the end. 
Okay, and and you and one uh, I think unique insight there was also the the data uh, income and other details about the area when you're selecting a location, mm-hmm. and I think that's one of the bigger benefits of a franchise model and obtaining a franchise instead of going off on your own. You have that kind of support. Um, so speaking of support, let's 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 talk about that. Um, before we move into, uh, uh, I, I want to spend a little bit of time uh, before we close off the episode talking about the running in a franchise, what happens later on. But as we close off the the, the portion on starting the franchise, uh, tell us a little bit more about what's involved in the initial training process. Um, do you guys train? What do you train? And and how long does it take? Yep. Um, so all of our initial training, so it's 200 plus hours of combined corporate office, in-club, online webinars, and follow-up training as well. Okay, uh, so we teach you everything from your internal systems all the way from your pre-sale, your marketing, all the way uh, through launching and with your personal training uh, campaign sales uh, and continuing on as well. Um, so it's not just, you know, all the initial, hey, here's the playbook. Um, we take you hand all hand in hand for, through every uh, step um, to really make sure you understand the brand and the model for your business. Um, And then, of course, like I said, we have that ongoing follow-up training and support as often as you need. Okay. Okay. So, so someone gets started uh, 200 hours of training um, uh, through a variety of resources. And now uh, I guess to, to end off, I wanted to, um, um, we talked about ongoing support and we talked about ongoing costs as well. 5%, uh, monthly growth sales, um, one of the best values in the, in the fitness industry. Now, once let's say uh, a franchise location is, is settled, so someone has started their location um, and it's been, uh, I'm not sure how long, let's say six months, a year, a few years, whatever it is, um, they've, they've settled, uh, they're in a routine. Um, can you touch upon what a typical day looks like for that, that business owner? Sure. Uh, yeah, typical uh, day routine. You know, the general manager comes in at uh, between eight to nine in the morning. Um, so they'll walk around first and do their facility check and make sure everything is in order. Um, they'll come back to the front desk and then they'll do the little uh, pre-shift meeting with their MSRs, uh, the member service representatives. You know, talk about uh, the new member units coming in from the previous day, any cancellations focus on uh, any marketing uh, that you have going on that particular week. Look at your group fitness training. Um, So you really want to focus on your KPIs. Um, And then once you really get your day uh, going, you're essentially uh, free to really run the club with your creative, um, with your marketing. And so you always want to, you're always moving and checking your four corners and your four points, essentially. You got your front desk, you have your relax and recover zone, you have your gym floor, and you also have your, uh, you know, the restroom and the facilities there. So you're always moving. You're always, you know, um, ensuring that the customer and that the members are having a good time, that they're, all the equipment is uh, clean and um, working properly and uh, the staff are all motivated and working and having fun and so that's the great thing about the gym business is you're not bogged down by the stresses of your bottom line like you would in a restaurant a hospitality service uh, a business where you're constantly watching your food prices and any kind of stuff you have there or any other industry um, it's really fun um, to work in a gym you know, uh, compared to not to say in any other industry, it's not fun, but, you know, um, I've worked in a variety of different ones. And for the field, uh, this is this is great. You know, I, I wouldn't want to work in any other field. So I, I, just making sure that the, the gym is running properly. Um, I think the marketing creative was a good point you touched upon, too. So if you're uh, so how much how much flexibility or how does that work? Uh, do franchise owners kind of get the opportunity to to uh, develop their own creative as they want, or is, is there an approval process with that office? How does that work? Yep, um, so the franchisee can follow uh, a lot of the creative marketing from corporate, um, but as a franchisee, you are uh, expected to you know drive your own revenue um, and also be a business owner. 
um, and drive your creative as well. So just because if, so we have some national campaigns that we do with coldest night of the year, Canadian blood services and what any other initiative. Um, so for those franchisees, um, they can either choose to participate in those campaigns or not. So we focus on, we actually have a number of, we only have three franchise groups. So we focus on a lower amount of owners with multi-unit um, ownership. Okay. So, um, okay. If we're doing um, if we're doing a campaign over in Cambridge, uh, which is a corporate uh, area there, and then the franchisee over in Hamilton is doing this a different creative marketing, um, that's totally fine. You know, so they can either choose to follow our uh, creative, um, or they can choose to go off on their own. Okay, that that brings up a good a good point, I think to to. Uh, explore as well. Um, so, so you're saying, um, so your goal is is having multi-unit owners. So, if an owner is uh, starts one unit, succeeds, and and is doing well, and then decides to open another and another, um, how what is does their day look like? Is is this individual um, uh, kind of looking at the KPIs for each of the different units and looking to what what would you say is a typical typical role for the, an individual in that position? Yep. Um, so for a multi-unit owner, that's exactly what they're doing. They're meeting with their department heads. Um, they're uh, traveling to each of their locations on a weekly basis um, and making sure that everything is running smoothly with their. They're having really having their thumb on the pulse of their business. Um, and so with the multi-unit owner, um, you can truly own a region. Um, and so that's how we really been able to really grow the franchise uh, so quick, even through COVID as well. Remember, we just came to Canada in 2017. So we really only had two, three years of, you know, um, growth before we had to close down for approximately a two year uh, uh, time, time frame there. You know, so it's definitely post COVID. We're really seeing numbers um, uh, reach uh, pre COVID levels. And so uh, it really does show the strength of the brand and the dedication and um, um, the welcoming of the community again. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So uh, great information for anyone looking to, to start a franchise with Crunch Fitness. Um, I'm going to drop the links below. So we'll get all of the, the links to whether you want to open a franchise, the link to their website, a few other links for information as well. Um, so before we end off, Clinton, do you have any final words for people looking to to get started with Crunch Fitness? Yeah. Um, so when, when you bring a Crunch Gym to your community, you're really bringing a world class facility that's attached to a world class brand that's synonymous with workouts uh, that are both effective and fun. Uh, so get in on the gym floor of Canada's fastest growing, high value, low priced fitness franchise. Awesome. Thank you for joining us, Clinton. Thank you for having me. War Stories is a hustle and grit podcast series sponsored by Treadstone Associates. Treadstone has worked with hundreds of businesses to help them dominate their industries. Our success led to the development of a simple four-stage special ops program called The War Room. The War Room's mission objective is simple. Build systems and processes with three goals. Reduce expenses, increase revenue, and ultimately transform the business owner from a manager to a CEO, from a soldier to a general. Each of the four battles in the war room focuses on a different aspect of your business, from accounting, operations, legal, and more. The foundation of each battle is the battle blueprint. The battle blueprint is a strategic plan prepared by a Treadstone General after evaluating your business's strengths and weaknesses. The Battle Blueprint includes specific, actionable steps to secure mission objectives. It is time to gather your troops and prepare for battle. For a limited time, you can receive Stage 1 Battle Blueprints for just $99. That is a $3,500 value. In addition, we are also waiving the fees for Stage 2, 3, and 4 Battle Blueprints. That is a $29,000 value for free. Click the link below to learn more and to schedule your free enlistment call today.